Well, one thing I get asked a lot about is bait. Where, how do I find bait? Where's bait on the flats? Where's this and that? Well, one thing that I definitely look for is I've discussed this in the past and I'll discuss it now is I look for birds. There's a pel couple pelicans way up there. I know you probably can't see them, but I'll take out my other camera and zoom in on them. But that right there tells me that there's definitely something in this area. So when I pulled up, I turned off the motor and I just listened and I wish I could, I wish I could replicate it but all i listen for is little flicks on the water like taking your finger and flicking the water that's exactly what the white bait sound like so i stopped the motor started the drift and sure enough boom i heard the flicks stopped anchored down and then there's there's dimpling right there so there's bait fish already in the chum um and now it's time to go and catch them A lot of people ask me about our gear and what we're using and I know I've, I've said it before in the past but we do get a lot of new people to the to the YouTube page and and so I want to kind of describe you know what I'm using oh uh, what I've got here is I've got a pen battle 3 uh, it's the DX 5000 I really I'm, I wasn't a big pen fan for the longest time but after using this reel I, I really really like it I've, it's very strong it's it's very light and and it it the drag is really really good on it and I'm using a seven foot six custom rod 15 uh, 15 30 pound by Scott Fletcher Fletcher custom rods uh, he has built a ton of rods for our customers and and uh, I absolutely love this rod it's been awesome and uh, I'll get into the conventional reel uh, that's another popular uh, another popular question that we get is what what is consists of our conventional setup so we'll get into that but I'm using uh, eight pound or actually ten pound braid I stopped bringing in eight pounds so I use ten pound now and people were like well why are you using such light braid well there's a couple reasons one is you don't get the bow in the line when the tides running when you're fishing deeper water you have a tendency to get a bow in your line when that happens you can't feel the bottom uh, all you see, all you feel is that oh son of a biscuit all you feel is is the um, the line bowed in 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 on the surface so you're not feeling your bait on the on the on the bottom especially in a deep water application so we're using 10 pound I'm using our 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader we do it have it in 30 and 40 pounds but I like to use 20 because I just I just get more bites on 20 do I get broken off more yes but I do catch a lot of fish on 20. I just I just swung and missed on that fish though. What I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm trying to fish for snapper. I've got uh, my bucket full of chum here and I'm just taking a little bit in the net, dumping it over. It's small enough to where I can do this. I don't have to cut it up. So I don't have to use our, our, bake, our bucket bait cutter. I always have trouble with that. So I'm just, I'm using an eight ounce slacker right now and I'm slowly feeding the line down because that tide is starting to kind of slack off a little bit. And that's why we call those jigs slackers is because we like to use them on a slack tide or a dead tide or when the tide's really slow or a slack tide, which is the dead tide. So that's when we like to use them. So what I'm doing now is just slowly letting out line, letting that bait go naturally. And when I feel the bite, I'm on them and I can get them up. And there you go. There's a snapper, just like that. That's all we're doing. It's it's a very simple, simple technique. Um, just to let you know, too, as, as you can see behind me, there's an island. We all know what that is. There's a ton of areas on the Port Manatee Shipping Channel that you can fish, um, and then you can catch fish. You just got to understand how to set up, and I'll go over that here in just a minute. But that's not a bad little snapper. I mean, it's a little small for, for me to keep. I like to try to keep them, you know, 14, 15 inches and above. But if we're struggling, then I'll catch one that size and we'll keep it. But this is how I like the snapper fish. When the tide's slow so I can chum and get them up off the bottom, that's the main key. 
there's a slacker jig right there eighth ounce we have a 330 seconds house also and uh so these work great for slow tide presentations actually some of my captain buddies have been using these in the mangroves fishing for uh redfish and snook this keeps the bait up in there and they also use the uh stewie jigs also for the same thing so primarily what i'm doing is i'm taking these small baits and i'm pretty much doubling them up and then sending them down So I'm sitting in about 35 feet of water. So now I know I can pull out three times. So it gives me close to uh, close to 30 feet of line out because it's a seven foot six rod. So I pull out the rod or pull out the line using the rod so I can get it out there. And then once I get it to a certain certain depth, that's when I grab it by hand and, and start to feed it by hand so I can feel the bite like that. I missed it. That one just came off. Son of a biscuit. <laughs> See, that's why it's so important that we take care of this fishery because this is such a great estuary for these smaller fish. I mean, we catch tiny little grouper, tiny little snapper, snook, redfish, trout, cobia, triple tail. Everything that comes into here is, is just a great breeding ground for these fish. And this is when the fish are, are spawned and they, they start to grow, they come back into these backcountry areas, these estuaries, these mangroves. And it it protects them and if we continue to dump bad water into this bay it's just gonna kill off everything uh, I remember back in the day when I first started fishing this this area it, if you could see two feet down you were lucky the seagrass was not very good uh, but over the years it, it has gotten a lot better but we still need to be more diligent on what we're actually dumping into this bay uh, and I don't think some of these people that deal with this stuff, they don't realize how important this bay is to the surrounding areas, to Manatee County, Sarasota County, uh, Braden, or, um, Pinellas County, Hillsborough County. Uh, there's so many businesses on the water, restaurants, things like that, hotels. Then you have your charter boat captains. Uh, it just there's so many people that make their living on this water that it's so important that we take care of it. That's a decent snapper. What I did is I think the um, slacker jig was getting to the bottom too quick. <clears throat> so I switched it up and I put on just a bare hook and sure enough, boom. Sometimes that slacker jig will get down to the bottom too fast and not be natural. So sometimes you got to go to a regular J or a regular circle hook and free line that way. And of course, he spit up a chum to a chun, ton of chummers. sometimes we've actually learned that it's it's the fall of the without the braided line sometimes we have to go to our conventionals because it, it falls differently in the water and sometimes they won't eat the spinning rods with the with the braided line but they'll eat the conventional rods with the 20 pound fluorocarbon not sure why but that's just the way it is sometimes so you got to change it up every once in a while just to see if something else will work and sure enough that's what i did and caught that nice snapper well a lot of people again I, I talked about our conventional before and a lot of people ask about that our conventional is actually a seven foot custom rod by Fletcher custom rods uh, 15 to 30 pounds it's got a lot of backbone to it but it's got a softer tip and it's lightweight that's what I love about this rod it's lightweight I have this reel here that I buy from China it's called top line it's 6.3 uh, ratio 
It's a strong reel. I like it a lot. I wish it was a um, level wine, but it's not. It just you just got to do it by hand. But I, I, it's it's strong. I've been using it for a while now. This is actually a little bit bigger one than what I was using before. Um, I just wanted to test out the bigger one, see what it was like. <laughs> la 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 Just like that the guys are getting in the mix A lot of times what will happen is those gags will get get into the mix and they'll push those snapper out of the way so we'll have to wait and see if we can get any more snapper or not. But almost every time those when those groupers show up, those snapper get pushed out because of course the grouper will eat the snapper. So they get out of the way of the grouper and let the grouper do their thing. So we'll see what happens. And like I said, I'm just slowly dumping maybe a dozen baits. Every time I bring up or if I lose a bait or something like that, I'll dump more bait just to keep that chum slit going to an extent. I don't want to overfeed them. And people ask me all the time, well, when do you like the chum? I like the chum when the tide is dead, like it is right now, or when the tide is very slow. If I start chumming when the tide's moving pretty good, your chum's just going to go far away from the boat and it's not going as you're just going to chum up another spot. So if the tide is moving quite a bit, don't chum. Unless, unless you have our chum dropper, then you can drop, drop it right to the bottom and it lets it out from the bottom, lets that chum out from the bottom of the chum dropper so it puts it right on the bottom. So you can, you can get the bottom stirred up on a moving tide with chum with the chum dropper. That's why we use it. But when it's slack like this, I like to, I, I, I like to chum. Now doing it this way, you have to count three feet for for every pole because that's about your arm length is three foot so now that I'm sitting in 35 feet of water I know that I've got to I've got to pull it out about 11 times before I get to that bottom but now the tide is slowly starting to creep in so that means it's going to go up this ledge and so it's going to get shallower so I'll get to about 11 times and then pull up that's definitely a worker son of a Biscuity. Oh. <laughs> That's the downfall to using this reel is once you slam that lever forward, you have no 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 give, no drag, no nothing. So uh, it's unfortunate, but as you can see, you can hook big fish doing this. All I'm doing is I'm using 20 pound fluorocarbon and yes I'm gonna get broke off just like I just did but I'm gonna get a lot more bites I'm gonna tell you that right now I'm just gonna get more bites unless we're fishing at night or if we're fishing dark dark water then I'll, I'll uh, maybe bump up every once in a while but typically I'll use 20 pound and that's what I've got on my uh, conventional rod or conventional reel And all I'm doing is I'll, I'll run my hand up there before I, I tie a knot just to make sure I don't have any frays or anything. God, I had that fish. I thought I had that fish. And then we're ready to go. I'm hoping that breaking that fish off is not going to shut them down because what will happen is when that fish breaks off, especially, especially uh, grouper, they'll start grunting. And when they start grunting down there, you might as well just pack up and leave because they're just alerting the other fish that there's fish down there. This is a snapper. Yep. Come on, man. We'll get in the mix. Getting a mix. That's fine, though. It's a little snapper. So, again, what I'll do is I'll just hook this bait in the belly like this. And then take about a dozen or so and just drop them in. Mm. 
<clears throat> oh yeah. Look at this beauty. what I'm talking about, whatever it felt. Natural presentations sometimes are key to get these fish to eat. Just slowly chumming them, getting them worked up. Let them go for another day. As you guys probably know by now, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fish eater. I'll keep fish if my wife says, hey, Todd, keep fish so we can do a catch, clean, and cook. But she hasn't said that in a while, so I'm not keeping fish. So when I'm out by myself, I typically will throw fish back. And uh, it's just who I am. You know, if, if people are on my boat and they want to keep fish, I don't have a problem with that. Just as long as we keep the limit, the legal limit of fish is fine by me. So me, most of the time, I'm a catch and release guy, even when you catch a nice keeper grouper like that. It's, it's all in the fun. It's all of me teaching myself different things and learning different techniques. Even though most of what you're seeing right now is typically what I do. But little nuances like going from the slacker to just a bare 4 aught Tampa Bay Fishing Channel hook allows me to present that bait more naturally because the tide is slack. So it's slowly going down with that 1 8 ounce it was going faster down. So the fish weren't keyed in on it. Making subtle changes like that is key. So as soon as this tide starts to move and go out or come back in, then I know that I'm gonna to have to go to a slacker jig. Well guys, that was a fun day in the water. Just a quick trip out, it's 12 o'clock. Thank you again for all of the support. We really appreciate it. Thank you for the kind words on these red tide videos. If you have any questions, if you have some information, get in touch with me. I really appreciate it. Fish more, catch more, and we'll see you on the flip side.